At a distance of 7.9 light years from Earth, Wolf 359 is a red dwarf star located in the constellation Leo, near the ecliptic plane. An apparent magnitude of 13.54 means it can only be seen with a large telescope. Only the Alpha Centauri system, Barnard's star, and the brown dwarfs of Lumen 16 and WISE 0855 are known to be closer. With the designation of M65, even for a red dwarf star, Wolf 359 is one of the faintest and lowest mass known stars. Indeed, its temperature of 2800 Kelvin is so low that chemical compounds can indeed form and survive on its surface. Absorption lines of compounds such as water and titanium oxide have been observed in its spectrum. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to focus on a small, tiny neighbourhood star that so many of us overlook. Could Wolf 359 one day play a part in our human future? Let's get to it. Like many red dwarfs of its kind, Wolf 359 is a flare star that can undergo sudden increases in luminosity for several minutes. It is known that red dwarf stars likely become more stable as they age, but Wolf 359 is a relatively young star with an age of less than a billion years. To find Wolf 359, we first need to find the constellation of Leo the Lion and its brightest star, the Lion King of Regulus, and also the bright star of Beta Leonis or Denebola. Wolf 359 is almost equidistant between them and directly south, as we see here. Unfortunately, it's so dim though, that its apparent magnitude of 13.5 means it's completely invisible to all but the most powerful telescopes, so I wouldn't waste much time trying to eyeball it on a clear winter's night. Interestingly, Wolf 359's high rate of proper motion indicates that it is indeed located nearby. It was first measured in 1917 by the German astronomer Max Wolf. Wolf catalogued as many as 1,000 stars, and not surprisingly, this star was entry number 359, and the name has stuck ever since. It's perhaps a little unfair given its prominent location and our size. Personally, I think it should be given a more interesting name, a bit like its counterpart Barnard star. At an estimated 9% of the Sun's mass, Wolf 359 is just above the lowest limit at which a star can perform hydrogen fusion through proton-proton chain reactions. At 8% of the Sun's mass, this would no longer be possible. Its radius is estimated around 14% of the Sun's radius, or about 97,000 km. Jupiter, for comparison, has an equatorial radius of 71,000 km, which makes it about 73% as large as Wolf 359. Here we see the star compared to other local stars. The Sun, Ptolemon, also known of course as Alpha Centauri b, and we also recognise that even the close red dwarf of Barnard's star outshines this tiny star. With its heat dissipated through convection, Wolf 359 will remain on the main sequence for about 8 trillion years. It also has a relatively high flare rate, and observations with the Hubble Space Telescope detected 32 flare events within a two hour period, and indeed during flare activity, Wolf 359 has been observed emitting X-rays and gamma rays. This makes Wolf 359 a very inhospitable star, and indeed its proper motion is moving slightly away from the Sun at a velocity of 19 km a second. This implies that it belongs to a population of old disk stars. Wolf 359's galactic orbit is eccentric. Interestingly, this means the star can travel as far as 444 light years away from the galactic plane, and its closest stellar neighbour is not indeed the Sun, but the red dwarf star of Ross 128 that lies around 3.7 light years away. Approximately 13,850 years ago, Wolf 359 was at its minimal distance of about 7.35 light years from the Sun. Does Wolf 359 have a planetary system? The answer is yes. In June 2019, an international team of astronomers reported the first detection of two candidate exoplanets orbiting Wolf 359 using the radial velocity method. Wolf's system is indeed similar to, but actually more extreme than that of nearby red dwarf Proxima Centauri. Both stars have a close-in low-mass planet and a farther-out higher-mass planet. The inner planet of Wolf 359c receives about three times more stellar radiation than the Earth does, and it makes it a very, very unlikely to be a habitable planet. Unless, of course, it were perhaps tidily locked, which could make things more interesting along theoretical Terminator lines. Wolf 359b, on the other hand, is much, much further out, and at 1.8 astronomical units, it is likely a frozen gas giant, perhaps something in the mould of Neptune at the lowest possible estimate but upwards of that limit, up to a possible maximum of perhaps something slightly smaller than Saturn. 
Saturn has around 95 Earth masses and this planet's upper limit would leave it at around 75. So it's either a Neptune or a type of gas world that we do not enjoy in our own solar system. Let's call it either a super Neptune or a mini Saturn. Of course worlds such as this may have indeed have their own moons, but the likelihood is that they will all be frozen in time, much like most of our own solar system's giant moons. In many of our Brightest Stars videos, we've looked at powerhouses like Deneb, Rigel, Castor or Betelgeuse, and so many of our graphics depict a scorched earth because of this. This is obviously though not going to be the case with Wolf 359, the opposite in fact, and if it were moved to the location of the Sun, it would appear just 10 times as bright as the full moon and have an apparent magnitude of around minus 19.4, which is ever so slightly brighter than the Sun at planet Neptune. In this next graphic we imagine the capital city of Russia, Moscow, and we observe the sunset. And then as Wolf 359 rises, we realise that at just minus 19.4 in apparent magnitude, it barely lights the city at all. Moscow enjoys broad daylight no longer, and quickly temperatures will dip and snow will begin to fall. As time passes by of course, day by day, month by month, slowly the earth would begin to freeze and render itself uninhabitable. Of course, in this scenario, humans would begin to panic and may perhaps look immediately towards Mercury or Venus as potential homes. And it's true that under Wolf 359, Venus would of course slowly cool down, but it would be too slowly. Perhaps eventually, a few hundred years in the future, a Venus under Wolf 359 could harbour Earth-like temperatures, but it still wouldn't have much light and its atmosphere would be toxic and the pressures would remain impossible for habitation. Mercury, of course, without any atmosphere, would freeze very quickly and fortunately still remains quite a long way outside the tiny habitable zone of Wolf 359. We see here that anything further out than 0.07 astronomical units indeed would become an ice ball, and that puts Mercury a long way away. The Wolf 359 system does of course have planets, as we've already mentioned, and here we see the inner planet C, too close in, and as we zoom out, planet B is far away and would indeed be frozen. Wolf 359 is a below average star in every respect. Its tiny frame outputs just one one thousandth of the luminosity of our sun. It has two planets, neither of which as things stand could support human life as we know it. First catalogued many years ago, its name is relatively unremarkable too. Perhaps for these reasons we've largely ignored it in our thirst for understanding. Wolf 359 is slowly drifting away from us, and for all intents and purposes, it has already disappeared into the void. Our sun's tiny little sidekick star is however going to shine on and far outlive us, and indeed many, if not even all of the stars in our local area. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you that have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could just be your idea next that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.